Hello everyone, welcome back to the Crypto Geo Show. I've got some more news for you guys, but granted it's mostly bad news. So if you're in a good mood, you should probably leave. I'm just kidding. Um, but yeah, let's just get right into it. First thing, Polygon cuts 20% of its workforce or almost 100 jobs. So, I mean, as you might know, market hasn't been the best in the past year and a half, year and three months or so. So this shouldn't be like too, too surprising. Um, but long story short, it's not the end for Polygon. Their treasury is still good. They have a balance of more than $250 million and another $1.9 billion Matic, which they're saying it's at 142. I think it was at 135, um, like just now, which would be over nearly like $3 billion. So granted, they're not going to dump on you all at once, but they have these extra funds uh, to continue operating. Yeah, that's pretty much it on this one. On to the next one. So yeah, the NBA Top Shot Moments NFT might be a security, as the judge is saying. So we're going to go a little bit more deeply into this one. Um, it's been a long time coming. I mean, the lawsuit was initially placed a year and a half ago. And Dapper Labs is saying, no, we're not an NFT. Their basic argument is basketball cards aren't securities. Pokemon cards aren't. Baseball cards aren't. So why would ours be? It's just digital. So we're going to go a little bit into the Howey test to see what are the tests or like the prongs, they call them, inside of the Howey test. And how did this NFT satisfy those prongs in order to be considered a security? So the very first one, an investment of money. They didn't even argue with this one. You had to buy the NFT. You did invest money. So that one wasn't an issue. The first issue comes with the second prong on whether or not there's common enterprise. So common enterprise is when you as the investor, your funds are pooled with that company itself. And them making profit means that you're making profit. So the reason they were saying it satisfied this one was because Dapper Labs controls the flow blockchain as well as the, as the marketplace where you can buy and sell these NFTs. Um, also, on that note, they were saying that Dapper Labs held some funds that they made from selling these tokens uh, and to use it for the purpose of fundraising and maintaining flow tokens value. So that's not a bad argument. I mean, if you use the money that you made from selling these NFTs in order to promote it so that more people come and buy it to raise the value, they kind of got a point there. I'll give them that. Okay, on to the third prong, expectation of profits. So I do want to mention that this, like just because you buy something expecting it to go up, that doesn't mean there's an expectation of profits. That means you expect it to make profits. Um, the expectation of profits in this case is more so the fact that you bought something that the company was saying should go up in value. Just like with stocks. Like if you invest in a stock, it's because you believe in the company, you think it has a good CEO or leaders, and it's an industry that you believe will raise in value over time and so that you make money on purchasing the stock. In this case, they're saying that the public statements and the marketing materials for this NFT project led the purchasers to expect profits from buying this. I haven't seen the marketing materials, so I can't really comment on whether or not this was justified or not. Um, they said they used screenshots of the Top Shot tweets. Um, maybe I'll go and find them, link them below, and you can make a decision for yourself. Okay, were, was it correct for them to say this could lead someone to believe that you would make money from buying this NFT? Okay, finally, the last prong, the efforts of others. So by the efforts of others, it means, like when you buy Apple, you don't do anything for Apple. Like Apple has a whole company where it runs, creates better products, sells these products, makes money, price of the stock goes up. So the judge is arguing that the moment's value is derived almost entirely from the continued operation by Dapper Labs. It does this by its secondary marketplace, which enables price transparency so you can go and see what some things are valued at and see like the history of the price. And more critically, it appears to provide purchasers with the ability to trade at all. So the sheer fact that it has a secondary blockchain, a secondary marketplace, is what they're saying satisfies this last prong. 
So th the key point is that the fact that Dapper Labs controls this secondary marketplace is the reason that it satisfies this one. Because it's a private blockchain, not everybody can get on it. Well, it's, it's private to them, only they can uh, get into this blockchain. And also that the people investing, they have to rely on Dapper Labs to maintain and upkeep all of their products in order for their NFT to have any value in the first place. The good news out of all this is that the judge said that this NFT being a security was specific to just Dapper Labs. It's like very narrow, meaning other NFTs might not be securities. And it's pretty easy to see how some wouldn't be. Like if you buy a project that's like purely art, they say it's completely art, it's not, there's no promise of investment. Also, most of them, like you create it on your own, or maybe it's a company, but they trade it on OpenSea. So it's on the Ethereum network, it's different. You didn't go and create your own blockchain and your own marketplace to go sell your own NFT. It's completely different. Um, so yeah, Dapper Labs has three weeks to respond. So we'll see what happens there. It'll be interesting. All right, final news article for today. And this is kind of interesting. Now we have that Uniswap traders can buy NFTs with any Ethereum token. Uh, so what this means is that typically you can go, for the most part, and buy an NFT on Uniswap with ETH, or maybe it might be in some other token. But with their new, it's called Universal Router Contract, you can pay for that NFT using USDT, even if it's denominated in ETH, or you could use SHIB, or you could use whatever other coin you have on the ETH network to buy it. Um, so what this does is that it finds the most cost-efficient route to swap your token for the one that the NFT you're looking for is denominated in, and then it goes and buys it. This is pretty cool. Like normally you'd have to, if you didn't have enough ETH for an NFT, you'd have to go swap some of your coins for ETH to just get enough, or maybe you have to go from your like exchange account, buy more ETH, send it over. Also interesting is that it plans to su support combined sums of multiple different cryptos for a single NFT sale. So you could use a bit of ETH, a bit of USDT, USDC, maybe some SHIB, combine them all, and if that combined value reaches the value of the NFT, you can buy it just that way. Granted, I feel like you'll run into a bunch of uh, gas fees. So I don't know how economical this might be. I mean, you've really gotta be like scraping the bottom of the barrel if you're trying to buy this NFT, but that's like pretty typical. For, uh, for us degenerates. Um, this point, I'm really not too sure about. So they're saying that the ta tax implications of this NFT, you'll have fewer transactions by going through the smart contract. So normally you'd have to trade each of the coins for, let's say it's in ETH, you'd have to trade all the coins for ETH, each of those is a taxable event, then you buy the NFT, that's the final taxable event. They're saying that here, that these transactions would not be counted as a taxable event. But I'm really not sure and I'm not convinced about this one. Because at the end of the day, you bought something in ETH. If you only had USDT, you have to somehow go from USDT into ETH in order to buy it. It seems not right for them to just look over this and say, oh no, you just bought it directly with USDT. I'm not entirely sure about this one. But if it is, that could be a pretty nice benefit. Uh, granted, this is particular to the Uniswap um, NFTs. I've never traded on it. Uh, like in the past week, Blur was 80%, OpenSea was about 15%, and Uniswap is, of course, smaller, less than 5% at that point. So it's not really a big, it's not, this isn't really big news. It's just cool to see this technology being developed, and maybe now that it's there, Blur or OpenSea might start to implement it at some point. All right, so that's all I got for today. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you next time. Take care.